Hello football fans. Well, I've been kind of busy on a vocal, so hence the lateness of this video recap, but whew, what a wild card weekend, huh? It was, it had its moments, it had its moments, even with the amount of blowouts. I mean, six games and only two of them were really close, and, um, and, uh, both, and, the blowouts just happened to include the two seven matchups, the games that included the seven seeds, and it has football fans questioning the move from two seasons from last season to add additional playoff spot because these seven seeds aren't going anywhere. Uh, I think the only that there have only been four two versus seven matchups. I think the only close one was um, last year. I think it was the Colts and the uh, excuse me the Bills. It was the Colts and the Bills. I think that was kind of neck and neck, and the Colts fell off by three points last year. But um, the other three that we played, including <sighs> sorry, the other three, the other three that we played, including last year's game between the Saints and the Bears. Yeah, they haven't been really close. But um, the Colts game actually started Wild Card Weekend. The Bengals. Which is fitting because uh, on my TV I got CBS on and they're advertising, um, advertising. Uh, the Bengals, they did it. Thirty-one years, first playoff win in thirty-one years. They beat the Raiders. Though it was pretty close. Uh, they needed a defensive. They needed a big play on defense to clinch it, and they got it. Intercepted uh, with uh, Derek Carr intercepted, um, close to the goal line. So. Um, the Bengals, they finally got rid of that, that, that itch. Their first playoff win since 1990. The team they beat, this, proved, this shows how long this was. The team they beat for their last playoff win, the Houston Oilers. I mean, that's a long, t that's a long time. But um, they were in the divisional playoff. And um, as far as elsewhere in the AFC, the Patriots got blasted. I thought that game was going to be close considering it was, it was a divisional matchup because divisional matchups usually are, whether they're the regular season or the playoffs. But, yeah, as as, as um, to borrow from the street profits, uh, the Patriots didn't want the smoke. No, they didn't want it. Not even close. Um, of course, the, other, the remaining game in the AFC was played that Sunday, and it was the... Chiefs and Steelers, and yeah, so it was not a good ending for for uh, the Steelers, and it was not a good ending for the Magnificent Seven, known as Ben Roethlisberger. Um, they had a defensive touchdown, but then reality set in, and the Chiefs were well, the Chiefs. <laughs> oh, but at least Big Ben made it at his twenty fourth. Career playoff start that uh, matches Joe, the great Joe Montana. So he's got that going, and he's got that and a lot of things going. Sixty-four thousand eighty-eight career passing yards, uh, regular season, not counting playoffs. He had playoffs. It's a lot more. He's definitely going to Canton, but it's an end to a very magnificent career for Ben Roethlisberger, and. Um, We'll see what the Steelers do from here with um, their, their 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 general off to retirement and on his way to Canton. And like I said, so the Chiefs move on, and now in the NFC, the NFC actually didn't get started until uh, Sunday because Saturday's games were Saturday had two AFC games, and um, the first one was Tampa beating Philly because of course they would. Uh, I felt I felt the Eagles were just happy to be there. I felt like well, we, I felt the Eagles had that mentality. Well, we're here. What more can we ask for? Uh, they really weren't a match for the for the for the Bucks, but um, and they scored a few touchdowns late, but that was it. But um, like I said, at least they made it. And now that they have a real quarterback instead of the redheaded stepchild known as Carson Wentz. There's a chance we may see him uh, in the postseason again. Who knows? Which brings us to San Francisco and Dallas. 
the best game of the weekend because of the two, uh, all, all the craziness that happened. Uh, the Niners dominated it, but it ended up being close. And uh, it was crazy. They went. It was crazy. They were getting deep. They were headed. They were headed. Moved out of the field. In their final possession. A lot of people thought they got the first down and sealed it, but it was ruled short. Then false start moved it back, and they had to punt. So Dallas had a chance. Dallas had a chance, and they were moving down the field. But then Mike McCarthy, the genius, decides to have Dak run down the middle. No one have no timeouts left. And because of that, the clock ran down to zeros. The game was over. I found it odd that this game of this magnitude, two, a battle between two five-time champions, and I could do the Booker T thing, uh, a battle between two five-time Super Bowl champions, um, I found it odd that this would get the Nickelodeon treatment. It took the following day to figure out why it got the Nickelodeon treatment. Mike McCarthy is why. Mike McCarthy makes Patrick Starr look like look as smart as Jimmy Knock Neutron Boy Genius. He is the dumbest coach in the NFL. We Packer fans warned Cowboy fans about him. We had to watch. We had to watch at this as this dummy ruined, nearly ruined, the the great man who wears this jersey. And uh and it, 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 so it, it was karmic. It was very karmic that he got fired on Roger's birthday. It was karmic. I mean, he really deserved a kick in the ass. But um, I'll settle for a pink slip. But the bottom line is he's Dallas's problem. And in two years there, he has messed up that team. He has. And not only does he call such a very stupid play to kill the game. Uh, he actually doubles down and said it was the right call to make. Oh boy, why well, should have did the Patrick voice? Oh, it was the right call to make. Oh boy, Mike McCarthy is dumber than a box of rocks. He is. We Packers fans know some of us still have borderline PTSD from from his 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 his, his lack of intelligence, costing us so much. And now he's messing up Dak Prescott. He already got him killed last year, and uh, he 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 killed Dallas's chances in that playoff game. He's a complete moron. As 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 a to quote a to quote a Donnery Hall of Famer, he's ate up with dumb, and they're stuck with him. Uh, people said people said Dallas should fire him. He's under contract. He's he's got a three year contract, so I think they'll have to they'll have to deal with him for another season. Then they can can him. <laughs> oh goodness. So Wild Card Weekend ended with the Rams and the Cardinals, and that was another ball. Oh dear. The Cardinals were not ready for prime time. And I figured th I figured this would happen. I figured they would get blasted like this because of the way their season ended. Ever since they lost that game to the Packers, they went down, down, down. It was terrible. And they ended the regular season losing, was it? They ended, I think they ended the regular season losing one of their five, one of their last five games. But again, full circle. They won, they, the one win in that the one win in that scenario against Dallas. And also because of the wanton moron known as Mike McCarthy. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, but anyway, um, and, and that was in Dallas too. So, but anyway, um, I I should have figured Arizona was going to go out with this because they have a terrible end of the season. They, 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 it's been like this the last two years. They start strong and then they fizzle out the wrong time. That's how they missed the playoffs last year, and that's how they literally back into the playoffs this year. It was terrible. The, the last, they were the last team to lose a game, and now, just awful. The Rams, all they had to do was show up and breathe. <laughs> it was that bad, and um, uh, <laughs> uh, Stafford went all over the uh, did his thing. 
OBJ did this thing. He was th he actually threw a pass, and at one point, Odell Beckham had more passing yards than Kyler Murray. Let's let that sink in for a second. So yeah. So bottom line, Walker Weekend had its moments, but there were four blowouts. There were four blowouts, and it's been it drew comparisons to. It's been drawing comparisons to the college football playoff semifinal games, which were both blowouts too. <laughs> so yeah, but I do love Wild Card Weekend. I love the NFL playoffs because the what it done atmosphere and that feel you get. But um, that's done, and now it's the Elite Eight, the divisional playoff, which we're part of. The matchups were set with the Rams win, and they are as follows: in the AFC, it's the Titans and the Bengals, and uh, it just it just now hit me. They're playing the, the Bengals will face the Houston Oilers technically, because <laughs> um we all know this. Houston the Oilers moved to Tennessee. They were the Tennessee Oilers, and they changed to the Tennessee Titans. But uh, yeah, Cincinnati technically is facing the team they defeated for their last playoff win until uh, last weekend. Um, but it's a different story. They're getting King Henry back. That's gonna be interesting. Um. So uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase still have the magic. But that's the matchup. That's one of the matchups in the AFC. The other matchup is the Chiefs and the Bills. It's a rematch of last year's AFC Championship, which the Chiefs won. But it's also a rematch of their regular season meeting, also in Kansas City, which the Bills won. Remember, the Bills blasted Kansas City when they were the down-and-out Chiefs early in the season, when Mahomes was making rare mistakes and the defense couldn't even stop a clock. But um, but that's it's a different team now, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, in the NFC, the Packers and the Niners. Oh boy, it's always fun when the Packers and Niners face each other. As a child of the '90s, I can speak from experience. Um, uh, of course, Rodgers has had his problems with the Niners, but that was mainly in Santa Clara, the game's in Lambeau. Jimmy G has never been in Lambeau. Listen, to my to my memory, I don't think he's ever played in Lambeau. And it's going to be cold as ice, as the song goes. Uh, <laughs> but it's going to be a close game nonetheless, because uh, it's the Niners, the Packers, there's that, there's that intensity. It's almost a hockey feel, that, that kind of closeness. So that's the latest chapter, and Rodgers has a chance to kind of exercise that demon too, because he... Um, uh, he's had problems against the Niners in the playoffs. And the other NFC matchup is Rams and the Bucks. And the, and the reason why I was, this is the reason why I was rooting for the Rams. Brady, since he joined the Bucks, he can't beat the Rams. And this is regardless of quarterback. Jared Goff beat him last year, and Stafford beat him this year. So, um, so yeah, we got that matchup. And that's a Sunday matchup. So, yeah, Saturday, the number one seeds play Titans, Titans, Bengals, Packers, Niners. And the number two seeds, uh, I say yeah, the number two seeds play uh, Sunday. Bucks, Rams, Bills, Chiefs. Those are my matchups. My predictions: Titans and Chiefs win the AFC, and Packers and Rams win in the NFC. That's my recap of Wildcard Weekend. If you like this video, click the like button. Click subscribe if you want more. My recap on vocal about Wildcard Weekend, Super Wildcard Weekend. It will be in the script is in the description below, so check that out. And I'll be back next week to recap the divisional playoff, hopefully with some good news. So stay tuned and go pack, go.